Hey, what's up, guys? It's Sabol Ochiya here, back with another part of what if Naruto was the fifth Hokage. And yeah, guys, this is the second upload of today. I will be uploading the next part of what if Naruto was in a political marriage today as well. So stay tuned for that as well. And yeah, guys, I will be uploading a first video, horror video, on the other channel. So stay tuned for that as well. If you want to check that out, please check that out. It will be in the featured channel section of my channel. And if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's continue my story. A little disclaimer, this might be uh, from a little flashback of previous part as well. So yeah, don't mind that, please. Sakura, stop crying. I hate seeing girls cry for stupid things, so let's just forget about it, okay? You're not a horrible friend. Not a great one either, but not a ho truly horrible one. You're just rough around the edges. Yeah, that's it. Rough around the edges, Naruto said as she looked up at him with her, her own tears in her eyes. How can you still say I'm your friend? I haven't done one thing friendly to you since we've known each other. Sakura sobbed out as Naruto rolled his eyes. Yes, you have. You just don't remember it. Remember when we were in the first part of the Junin exams and you were about to raise your hand? Sasuke told me that you were going to do it for my sake. And remember in the forest of that how you took care of me and Sasuke until we were feeling better? That was friendly. In fact, it was wrong, right? Um, um, I can't think of a word to describe something more friendlier. Naruto said as he scratched the back of his head and chuckled lightly. Then he suddenly heard giggling. At first, they were light, but then they had a got louder and louder until they turned into chuckles and then full-blown laughter. Naruto looked up and saw Sakura had fallen out of her chair and was on the floor laughing at what he had no clue. Sakura, are you okay? You haven't snapped, have you? Naruto asked while she quieted herself and returned to her seat. No, Naruto, I haven't gone crazy yet. It's just, <laughs> you seemed so smart and calm, but you haven't changed a bit. You're still a moron <laughs> with a ramen addiction. Sakura said between shorts about of giggles. Hey, I'll have you know that I'm getting help from my not so much of a problem problem. I've gone to three ramen anonymous meetings and have four patches on. Naruto defined it as he raised the sleeves of his kage robe to show her the red four patches with a ramen symbol on them. Sakura gave him a grin as she reached over and ripped one of the patches hard. Naruto yelped as he rubbed his arm while Ambu Ninja jumps from the shadow corners of his office and helped him and held upon weapons to Sakura's vital organs. Naruto gave, him, gave her a smirk as he stopped rubbing his arm and leaned back in his chair. Can't he can't pick on a fight with me anymore, can you now, Sakura? Naruto asked cheekily as she stuck out her tongue and said, Brat, she said as, as he chuckled. Hey, I'm a lot older than you, and at least I don't have pink hair. He replied with a shrug while she gasped at the unborn return to their positions in the shadows. I thought you liked my hair, she said as she touched her locks of pink unconsciously. I do, because it looks good on you. But seriously, if my kids, especially my son, came out with pink hair, then I'd be fully prepared to use a forbidden jutsu charge to change their hair color permanently. Nara said as Sakura gave him a look. You know my grandfather had pink hair and was proud of it. Sakura replied as Naruto gave her a look. Was he a ninja? He asked as she shook her head. What did he do then? He was an actor for a traveling theater group. She said as Naruto let out a snort of laughter. Let me guess, he played the woman part. Naruto said as his face was wet with a fist. The Anbu didn't even bother coming to his aid as they were too busy either sweat dropping or giggling to, the sh to themselves in the shadows. I can hear you guys, you know. Sakura shouted to the walls as the giggling and snickering stopped upon hearing her glares. To the shadows of his office. Don't yell at my Anbu, it's not their fault your guns was made to be a girl. Naruto said but then laughed at his unintentional joke. Sakura only sighed and sat back in her chair as looked at her with amusement dancing in his eyes. You're never gonna let that go, are you? She asked him as he shaky, shaked his head back. Not a chance. He replied as she hung her head. It was silent for a moment until she spoke. Thanks, Naruto, for everything. She said she got up and hugged him quickly and ran from the office with a smile on her face. Naruto shook his head at how just bipolar girls could be. Next. Outside the Konoha Barrier Just outside the Konoha Barrier were Taydar and Sasori standing up and looking at the barrier. Or at least neither of us. So, I got the clay all ready for our infiltration. Yeah. What's the plans? Hmm, Sasori, my man. Deidara said as he gestured to the giant clay lump that was in his hands. We wait until the nightfall. By then, the security will be more alert and while they try and find me on the crown, you'll be able to fly high above the village and infiltrate the Hokage mansion. 
From there you can use your clay technique to set up a spy on the Kage and the village. And then we make our escape. Sasuke explained as they that are nodded. Fine then. I'd had best get prepared then. Yeah. Leidara said as he molded the clay with his hands and created a beautiful clay bird. I fly around a bit so they don't find the bird suspicious. Then your signal, I'll go through the barrier and alert them to my presence. Yeah, Leidara threw the bird lazily and in a pump of smoke increased the size of the bird tenfold. Good thinking, Deidara. I'll give the signal near sunset. So be ready for it, understand? Sasori said from inside his Huriko as Deidara nodded and took to the skies on his bird. Link break with Suchikage. Oniki the Tsuchikage was known for many things, the most prominent tied in with his nickname name. Oniki the great fencer or the man of both scales, he was widely known for in his youth as a man who could have things both ways. He could be cold and ruthless to one person and then kind and considerate to the next person. It was this fireballer personality that made him a dangerous opponent to deal with at any time regardless of friend or foe. Anything he was known for was having become the student of the second Tsuchikage Mu. As a young man, Oniki was a student to the Tsuchikage Mu who had taught him how to use the dust release techniques that he could to this very day use. While the man had been a hard taskmaster, those teachings had made him the man he was today. It was later in his, his younger life that he himself wanted to pass on the teachings of his sensei to another. So he became teacher to Deidara. Though he often implied that Deidara's ideology and fighting style annoyed him, he was still proud of the brat for having been as talented as he was and he was very proud to have been his sensei. Even if all that brat ever raved about was the art crap. Onki was also known for at some time in the past having fought mother Uchiha with him now being the only living kage to do so. If that Hiruzen boy was still alive, then he would have been only the oldest Tokage to have done so. Yet another thing he had been known for was the stubbornness. In fact, he was so stubborn and prideful that even despite his frailty of old age, he still refused to retire and chose a successor as a Tsuchikage. He insisted that he was still strong enough to continue to rule the village. And he was, damn it, his granddaughter, Kuritsuchi, would be quite proud yet still annoyed to describe him as a stubborn old man. So all that led to the very meeting he was in. He had gathered the council and was on having yet another meeting at their request, the meeting being about the Namikaze brat that had been made the Hokage of Konha. While he had rubbed it in their faces that the fourth Hokage did have a plan after he died, he forgot that they were all annoying fools who thought they could just attack the world on a whim. We must do something about Konha. If we don't, then the new Kage brat could come after our village due to past aggressions. A councilman shouted as a councilwoman banged her fist on the round table. Their meeting was discussed over. Fool, that would be falling into their traps. The kid wants us to attack so he can simply declare all out war on us. This brat is just waiting for any type of attack to this village. They just beat back Orochimaru and the sand surprise invasion. They have the sand village at their mercy and could easily take their in territory as their own. If we act now, then we'll have the sand and the leaf to worry about, the council women said as several of them nodded. Then we must do something, anything, this kid is a kage level ninja at the age of 13 year old. We'll all see great ninjas of his age rise up like that Uchiha boy that murdered his clan and that Hatake kid who mastered a thousand jutsus at the age of 13 as well. This boy is a Kage, however, is a whole another level. If he is anything like his father or has access to his father's techniques, then his village may already be at risk. The councilman argued back as the room sounded exploded into a shouting match between them. Oniki rubbed his temples in a failed attempt to calm himself. Why must they be so hard-headed? It was like they were made of rocks and stones. Oh, the irony. Shut up! Oniki shouted with unparalleled volume. One of those Harano could best him in yelling. Listen and listen well. Because I am not going to repeat myself, you blockheads, we are not going to attack anyone. And no one is attacking us. You should all remember that after the third great ninja war, I and the fourth Hokage sat down and created a ceasefire that was to last at least 20 years. It has been 18 years since then, so we are not attacking anymore. Moniki said with them being silent. Slowly an elder council woman stood as he looked at 
Hisuchi Kage, Oniki-sama. Perhaps a test of this new Kage abilities is lead in order. The elder said as Oniki glanced at him, I'm listening. Oniki said as he leaned back in his chair, Well, since they are so fresh from the invasion, perhaps we could help them keep a strong face. And if they were not to survive, then there is no reason to be saddened for the inability of their Kage. The elder said as Oniki's eyes were in a fraction at the implied message. He then chuckled from the head of the council table. Perhaps a test is in order. Someone summon Kurotasuchi and tell her to get here quickly. Oniki said with a grin that made the council members nearest him shy away in fear. We have plans to make. Link break. Konoha with Naruto. Naruto leaned back in his chair, finger in his ear as he tried to regain his lost hearing from the shouted Rock Lee had done about just how youthful it was for him to be made Hokage. Truly, it was a testament to your burning youth that became Hokage. Hokage-sama, our spirit burned brightly in the sun of summertime youth. Rock Lee exclaimed as the Anbu in the corner were twitching. Some of them wanted to kill him and Guy, while others wanting to just shut them up somehow. Huh? Did you say something, Lee? Naruto said as he had lost his hearing at the very first of Lee's rant. Lee fell over by the eyes and gaping as Naruto finally got his hearing back. Curse your okage sama and your cool hip attitude. From this day forth, you and I are rivals. Lee proclaimed as he pointed a dramatic finger at Naruto. Huh? Naruto asked intelligently as he looked at Lee in confusion. I will best you someday, Hokage sama Lee exclaimed and Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. Um, okay, but you do know you can call me Naruto, right? Bushy brows. Naruto said as Lee looked at him. I couldn't do that. It would be wrong for me to call you anything less than your title dedicates. In fact, I shall now refer to you as Hokage sama no matter what. That is my declaration from this day. Lee shot his Naruto aside and lumped back in his chair. He could really already tell that Lee and Guy would be headaches. Finally, whatever, he said as he grew up his hands in defeat and sighed. Lee then stood from his chair and bowed respectfully to Naruto as he collected his crutches and limped towards the door. That's now, if you don't mind Hokage-sama, I'm going to limp 20 laps around the village. Lee said as he bowed to Naruto and stared for the door. But the village is at least 10 kilometers around, and that doesn't include the Hokage monument or the mountains, Naruto said as Lee nodded vigorously and limped quickly from the room, intent on doing just what he said. Naruto sat in his desk behind and stared at the spot Lee was for a few moments. He quickly shook his head and he got up and walked over to the door. We have to send someone after the boy and another to be sure Granny Sonata kept him in the hospital room. Link break. Next, Naruto called out as he looked at the people who were still in the hall. It was Tenten, Neji, Inata, Shikamaru, Choji, Shino, and Kiba. He silently wondered why the hell they weren't on missions. Why the hell aren't you any of you on missions? Naruto asked aloud as they shrugged collecting the mission hall was it open, so everyone figured we had the day off or something. Ruka sensei said that you were supposed to be heading there and handing out the missions with him today. But since you didn't show up, he figured you were giving Joan in and below a day of peace. Tintin said as she walked up to Naruto. Naruto face palmed himself as he forgot about the mission hall. He could say that how could he forget? Having stood in front of the old man and Uruka so many times before his death, Naruto shook his head as he ushered Tenten into his office. Tenten began exploring it as Naruto looked at her with a raised eyebrow. She certainly wasn't shy about looking around his office. I never really been in the Okage office, Tenten said with an arm held behind her back as she looked at him from over her shoulder. I've only been in here three times, and that was for only about two minutes or so. Really, then feel free to look around, Naruto said as he sat behind his desk. He watched her as she moved about his office, looked at each and everything with interest and awe. Most of the things in the office were things he decided to keep from the old man's time as Hokage. Konohamaru had told him about the old man's things being put in the storage and he went through them and saw something or some items that he liked. Asuma had graciously allowed him to take them, saying that he just let them collect dust in the storage. Naruto was broken from his thoughts as Tenten gazed up at the row of Hokage photos along the top of the sidewalk. Wow, are these really the Hokages? Tenten asked excitedly as she looked up at the pictures. Naruto got out of his seat and walked over to the stand next to her as he took two looked up at them with interest. The first photo to the left showed a young man of his late twenties. He had dark tan skin and brown eyes and long black hair. 
He was smiling slightly as his eyes seemed to be focused on not just the camera but the future as well. Under the photo was a plot that read several quotes from the man they had known to be the first Tokage. The fellow countrymen of Konoha make up each part of my body. Those of the village believe in me and I believe in them. That is what it means to be Hokage, read the first quote. Naruto thought about it and wondered if the people believed in him. He then remembered his coronation and how they had all said they believed in him. He smiled lightly like his great-grandfather did in his picture. He really was the Hokage now. Those who stray from the path of justice have no courage, but under the wings of a strong leader, cowardice cannot survive. Second quote read, after reading the quote, Naruto thought over if he was a good leader. He hadn't been leading long enough to actually know if he was or not. He'd given it some time before he came it came back to it. Landscape, luxuriant, perfect beauty with no artifice. The last quote read. Naruto and Tenta looked at each other. They had no clue what that one said. Probably his favorite quote. It means nothing to us, but probably was everything to him. Naruto said with a shrug as they gazed at the second picture. The second picture was a man that looked just as old as the other one. The man that was the second Hokage had pale white skin along with shaggy white hair, red eyes and three red streaks, one under each eye and one on his chin. He also wore a forehead protector that was molded to resemble his face. Guard and he wasn't exactly smiling, his face was bland and serious in a way that most people expected a leader of photos should be. But in his eyes was unyielding determination and courage. He looked so impassive that it almost was scary. Guide the people and believe in them, for it's from among them that one will come who will carry on when your time is done. The first quote read, Naruto read it again and it seemed that his great great grand uncle was speaking directly to whoever was to be Hokage, which was him. He wondered if his bipolar people would allow him to guide them. He shook his head of those thoughts as it seemed that the village was okay with him being Hokage, right? You must protect those who have faith in you and who love the village. Help them train up those to whom you can entrust with the next generation. Read the second quote. Not a wonder though who he would choose to be his successor when he died. Then he wondered if he even get the chance. The old man and his own father hadn't gotten a chance to name the fifth Hokage when they had died. Train the body, own the mind, and pass down your techniques and skills to the next generation. The last quote tried. Narada thought about it, and it seemed that the second Hokage was intent on continuing his legacy and passing down anything helpful to those who would come after him. Narada wondered if he should do the same. Naruto and Tenten gazed over the third picture and were a bit confused until they read the name above, above, above it and confirmed that it was the old man, Hiruzen Saratobi, and the third Okage of Konoha. Though in the picture, the old man didn't look so old. He looked to be about 30 or 40 years old. He looked far more youthful than he had before he died. He had tan skin with a small goat and short spiked hair, both being dark brown, and instead of the three lines, that had run vertically around his eyes, there were only one under each eye. He was smiling softly as he gazed into the camera, his eyes just as gently as the last time Naruto had saw him alive. He seemed to have been at peace the way he was just so relaxed in the picture. Oh, who would have known the third Hokage was hot when he was young? Tenen commented as Naruto looked at her bunny. What? She defended as he shrugged while he, they began to read the quote. When the tree leaves dances, one shall find flames. The flame's shadow will illuminate the village. And once again, tree leaves shall bud anew. The first quote read, Wow, that's just as beautiful as the when he read it to us in Ruka Sensei's class on our first day. Tenten says not a nodded, tears welling up in his eyes. He read it to us too. Ruka Sensei said that he read it every year to the new classes so they could know. What the feel of fire means. Naruto said as he wiped away his tears. The only grandfather figure he had ever had was gone, and it was all Orochimaru's fault. He felt arms wrapped around him and saw that Tenten was hugging him from his side and leaning her head on his shoulder to comfort him. He smiled down at her as they continued to read the old man's quote. Konoha, it is a place where every year a shinobi are born, raised, grow old, fight, and die to protect their home. These people that do so and everyone else that live inside its walls are precious to me. 
We share a home, we share a life, and though we may not share the ties of blood, they are still precious to me. They are my family, and if I do fall, all threats to my home will still fall, or, or I am only one of a long line. I carry the title of those Hokage who came before and those who will come after. I am the third Hokage and I will protect the family of the village Konoha, the second Kotrai. Naruto and Tenten stood in awe of it. They could practically hear his voice and the conviction in it as they read it. It was so powerful and moving Naruto wondered if he could be like the old man was someday. To be the one to protect this village, not just the village and its people, they were his people and they were his family. True, he had never had a family before, but he wanted the family, all of them, to be his family. The people he resolved to protect. He resolved to make that happen by being the best he could, by being the fifth Okage. Absolute truth, read the last quote. Naruto and Tenten looked at each other as if they had just gotten off a roller coaster halfway through the ride. It was kind of disappointing that the old man's favorite quote was so short and moving. That was disappointing. Then then that best not a shrug. I guess they can't all be tear jerkers or heart felt. Naruto defended as Tenten side as they gazed over to the next photo. Now the photo made Tenten look back and forth between Naruto and the picture. All the hell could no one see that this was your dad? Tenten demanded as she pointed at the photo. Naruto shrugged as he didn't really have an answer now. That he was actually looking at the photo, true to be told, he had never really seen a colored image of his photo father aka fourth Hokage. The photo was a very young man, probably in his early to middle twenties. He was a fair skinned man with a bright screwing blue eyes and spiky blonde hair. His head jawline bangs forming both sides from his face. He was smiling just light enough to be considered a smile. His eyes seemed to be gazing out past the photo and into the soul of whoever was looking at them, almost like he was judging them. Naruto and Tenten both shuddered as it seemed that his eyes were gazing directly at them. They both decided not to look at him anymore and then began reading his course. The most important thing of a shinobi is teamwork. First quote card. Hey, wasn't Minato Sensei Kakashi Sensei's teacher? Tenten asked as Naruto nodded. Yup, that's why Kakashi probably sucks at teaching. Naruto said as Tenten looked at Naruto with wide eyes. That's your dad and your predecessor, Tenten admonished and Naruto shrugged. Don't get me wrong, he was probably a great guy, but it seems to me that Kakashi sensei either wasn't paying attention when he was being taught or my dad kinda sucked at teaching. I mean, teamwork is important, but don't you think you should teach people some skills too? Besides, Jirai sensei kinda sucks at teaching too, and he taught me he taught my dad. Naruto said as Tenten shook her head. Hey, don't blame me. It just seems like they don't really learn too much from each other. While I was being taught, it was me learning on my own through spars and scrolls instead of Jirai Sensei actually teaching me stuff. The only thing he actually stood and taught me was the frog kata, which I can't even use to its full potential for some reason. Why not? Tenten asked as Naruto shrugged again. Something about being a sage natural energy and something other crap he was talking about. He said that He'd teach it to me later, but that I'm incapable of learning it now. He said to wait three or four years before I start training it. Naruto explained as Tenten shrugged herself while they went back to reading the quotes. The village comes before pers personal matters and emotions. The second quote. Naruto nodded his head as he had come to understand that well. Though he could only imagine what more things he have to do to ensure the village safety and peace of the village. The quotes sounds like Kind of devoid, don't you think? Tenten said as Naruto glanced at her. How so? He asked as she shrugged while pointing at the code. It's like one of those things you put into specific situations. So like, say, if someone came to the village and you found out they had killed a clan or something, but they were your brother and a powerful ninja, your duty would be to kill him first and ask questions later. But what if the clan had been about to revolt or something? What would you do then? Tenten explained as Naruto shrugged. Not sure, but if a clan had been about to revolt and the uh, only way to deal with them after all peaceful ideas have been tried was to kill them, all with a member of their own clan, what would you do? Naruto asked as he gazed at Tenten from the corner of his eye. I'm not sure. I would think to use an Anbu force, but then again, this is a clan who have been trained from the birth to act as a family and a unit. If the clan member you're using is more loyal to the village than his own clan, then I say use him. 
though it would probably cause panic if the village ever found out. I would probably send the, that same ninja out of the village to live as a rogue until I found a peaceful way to reveal the truth to the village. Tintin said as Naruto continued to watch her. Her eyes widened as she realized something about Naruto put a hand to stop her. I am sure you and my Anbu in the shadows have realized it by now. But I think this should be the first official order I'll give you, Kenin, Tenten, and my Anbu. None of you are to speak a word what you have figured out, under penalty of imprisonment or death. I will, however, be sending some of you on a mission, which will deal with a, this nature. Naruto said as he gazed around his now silent office. The Anbu jumped from the shadows and stood in the military lineup as they saluted him. That is so cool. Tenten muttered as she watched the Anbu disappear. Naruto grinned at her as she shrugged. What can I say? They were trained quite well. Naruto said as cheekily Tenten sighed while they both turned back to the last court of the 4th Okage Mutual Namikaze. The fire shadow illuminates the village. The last court read as Naruto scoffed, crossing his arms and closed his eyes as turned from courts. Tenten looked at him oddly as he nudged him. What's up with you? Tenten asked as Naruto turned to her. My dad's favorite phrases is based off the old man teasing and saying, Naruto said as Tenten reread the quotes inside. Maybe your dad was inspired by the third Okage. Tenten said as Naruto shrugged. Maybe. But he still is a copier. Naruto said as Tenten sighed a bit. I don't see your photo up there. Tenten commented as he gazed up at the wall. That's because I haven't been the Okage that long. It's only been three days since my coronation. So the village needs time to know me and my ways of leadership. Tenten just looked at him and shrugged. Naruto walked over and sat behind his desk. He played with his Kage hat on the middle of the desk as Tenzin continued to look around his office. She eventually sat down in his chair in front of him as he removed his hat from the desk. So, what did you want to talk about, Tenten? Naruto asked as he leaned forward on his elbows. Um, you know, just wanted to say congratulations on becoming Hokage. I know you've done a great job and I hope to be alongside you as a loyal ninja, of course. Tenten said blushing as Naruto raised an eyebrow. Tenten, I already know about your feelings towards me. And if that's how you feel, then please try not to be so uncomfortable about it. I'm still Naruto, but not. But now I'm Okage Naruto. Naruto said as he leaned back in his chair while Tenten gave him a sour flip. Listen, I'll tell you the same thing I told Zeno. I think we should get to know each other before jumping into anything we're not supposed to prepare for. I would hate for you to give up your career simply to become my wife, Naruto said. Yeah, so I. Uh, uh, hey, wait. Why would I have to give up being a ninja just to be your wife? Tenten said as she stood from her chair and slammed her hands on the desk. Because you'll most likely be with child. Naruto said timidly as he drew circles around his desk. Tenten blushed as she thought about her and him doing rather imitate things, intimate things together. Oh yeah, right, I'm sorry about that. So I wouldn't have to give up being a ninja permanently, right? Tenten asked Naruto shrug. I'm not sure, you'll have to talk to someone who has better experience with that, but we can worry about the later, if there is a later, Naruto said as Tenten nodded sheepishly, right then, well I'm off, see you later Hokage, Sama Tenten said as she stood and bowed to him, with him sighing in action, you know you can call me Naruto right, he said as she smiled and walked to the door, alright Naruto Sama, Tenten said as she darted out of the door, Naruto banged his head against the desk, I just can't be nice to people. Naruto muttered as he picked his head up. Next, Link Break. Cross country with Hidan and Kakasu. Hey, Kakasu, how much longer until we get there? Hidan asked as they walked through the grass plains to the North Cross Country. We'll get there when we get there. But as for now, we're hunting a bounty of 45 million to you. So shut up and get moving. Kakasu said as he bent low and spewed, swept up fingers across the ground. The earth was softer, which means the bounty had come through only recently. They would only take another day or two, and then they could head for another country or another high mountain. But I thought you were dead set on taking out the new Hokage, Hidan said as Kakusu sighed deeply. Why was his only good partner also a complete moron and jackass? I do, but I also lied so the leader wouldn't be sending us on missions and other stuff. I wanted him to think my only interest was Konoha. That way he wouldn't feel the need to check our movements. Besides, we could have been there in a day or two, but I want to collect some cash for just us, not Akarski. Think of it as a vacation. You got to kill Enmei while I get cash. We're both happy, right? 
Bakasu said as Hidan walked up next to him with a huge grin. Damn straight I'm happy. Why didn't you say that from the beginning? Yahoo! I am going to enjoy this. Raising Lord Jashin on this vacation. Hidan shouted excitedly as the man jumped from the grass plains and ran off. Well, there's your first vacation. Had it hunt for you. Be sure to keep his head intact and that his body is unrecognizable. Kakasu said as he done howled like a wolf and gave chase to the man who was running for his life literally. Vacations never get any better than this. Kakasu stated as he followed along at a lazy pace while rubbing his hands getting greedily. Link break Konoha Bernardo. Um thanks Naji. I'll be sure to keep all that in mind, Nata said as he looked visibly paler and was sweating slightly. Neji stood from his chair and bowed formally that to Nato. Thank you for the time, Nata Sama. Neji stared as he turned and walked out of Nata's office. Next, Nata shouted out shakily as Hinata poked her head through the door. That's me, she said as Nata as she walked in, poking her fingers together nervously as Nata stared, started to sweat more as she came closer to him and sat down. Um Okage kun. I mean Okage Sama. Are you alright? Hinata asked nervously as she began to hear snickering and giggling from the shadows. Be quiet or else all, all of you are going back to academy and being in Konohamaru's class. Nata shouted out as the noises stopped suddenly. Are you alright Okage-sama? Hinata asked a little more relaxed than before. For some reason the chair that was made of wood and seemed to be growing out of the wooden floor boards was making her feel comfortable, safe and relaxed. Yeah I'm fine and you can call me Naruto you know. And I see you're enjoying that chair, Naruto said as Hinata nodded meekly. You should because it's made to give a person a sense of relaxation as they sit on it. Now that, what did you want to talk about, Hinata? Naruto said as he leaned forward to give gaze into her eyes. She blushed as she could see herself in the reflection of his eyes. Nothing much. I just wanted to con congratulation, congratulate on becoming the Hokage. N no one deserves it more than you. She said as Naruto raised a brawl leaned back into his chair. I wouldn't say that. There are a lot of more powerful ninjas than me who should have become Hokage. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy or that I won't be at my best anytime soon. Naruto said as Inata nodded. I'll know you'll do your best, naruto You always do. Naruto said with confidence as Naruto gazed at her. She blushed and turned away from his intent blue eyes. They were like pool of crystal clear waters that planed to swallow her whole if she gazed into them longly. Thanks, Hinata. But thanks for something I have to talk to you about now. Naruto said as he turned back to her. What is it, Naruto-kun? She asked as Naruto got out of his chair and walked over to the window to look out. Hands behind his back as he watched children play on the streets. It's a hard topic for both of us, but I feel that it needs to be addressed before we have any sort of relationship. Naruto said slowly as Hinata looked at him in confusion. What is it? She re repeated as he finally turned to her with his eyes looking at her as if she were caught red handed. You stalked me, Hinata. Naruto said, Huh? Was Hinata intelligent reply as Naruto threw his hands up. You stalked me, Hinata. You followed me around without my permission for years, in fact, before I knew. It. In fact, if it wasn't for your father, then I wouldn't have ever known. You stalked me, Hinata. That's so not cool. Naruto ranted as Naruto grew wider and nervous. What if he thought she was creepy? What if he never wanted to see her again? What if he got a straining order out on her? Hinata, are you listening to me? Naruto shouted as she was snapped from her thought. Yes, of course! Hinata said as she held her hands to her laps as so they wouldn't fidget anymore. Hinata, you stalked me. That's not so cool. That's just downright wrong. I have no clue how then and to where you did, but still so bad. Naruto said as something inside Hinata snap. But I love you! She shouted out as the Anbu all came out from the shadows and sat on the couch of Naruto's office. They shared popcorn as they watched the two twisted lovers argue over her ways of love, which was talking the one she loves. That doesn't matter. Stalking is still bad. In fact, I could have you listed as stalkers for this, but I did it for love. That's still bullshit. You could have told me. Naruto shouted as Hinata stood from her chair and got in his face. But all you cared about was Sakura. Sakura, this Sakura, that Sakura, who? You never once thought of me. She yelled at him as he looked offended. That is not true, and besides, you were you never gave any hints to the fact that you liked me. I thought you were weird and quiet like Shino. How the hell did you not see it? The 
blushing, the fainting, the whispers your name in my sleep, the stealing your only pair of black pants and hanging them on my wall. Nada shouted as her eyes filled up with tears brimming in them. So that's what happened to my pants. I love those pants too. So all you cared about is Sakura and black pants? Nada screamed as tears streamed down on her face, falling on her chain onto the floor. Nada, I, I did think about you. I thought about you for our, from our first to our last days in the academy. Who I didn't think about you as much as Sakura, but I thought about you more than those nameless background girls that were in our class. In fact, I don't even remember any girls from our class except for you and Sakura and Ino. Nada shouted as he grabbed Hinata by the shoulder. Then why didn't you talk to me? Why didn't you ask me out on a date? Why was Sakura the only girl to have your affection? Why couldn't I be the one? Hinata cried out. I don't know. I'm an idiot, I guess. I'm a moron, okay? I was stupid. I guess that my love for Sakura was a way of getting attention. I'm sorry, alright? No, it's not alright. My heart broke every time I saw you ask her out. It broke with every smile and sweet word you would say to her, while she would beat up into the ground for it. She didn't deserve your love. I did. It was me who would silently encourage you. It was me who would have been at your side had you asked. It was I who loved you from the very beginning. Hinata. Nata said as he gazed down at her. He just realized that he was now a head taller than her. Oh, and that she was deeply in love with him. Yeah, he couldn't forget that. Excuse me, Hokage-sama. Nata-sama, but may I say something? A voice said as Naruto and Nata turned to the couch where Cat Mast Anbu had his hands raised while his fellow Anbu were looking at him. Tora senpai you can't just interrupt stuff like this. It was just getting good. The Osmast Anbu next to him whined as he slipped popcorn under his mask. Yes, yeah, senpai, the bird mast Anbu said. Um we're trying to have a moment here, Naruto stated flatly as the Anbu quieted. Yes, and I apologize for ruining it, but I think the both of you are at fault here. Tora, the cat mast Anbu said as Naruto and Hinata blinked. Me? It was all his slash her fault. They shouted at pointing at each other. Listen, Hokage sama, Hinata sama. The blame lies with both of you, Tora said as they as he turned to Hinata. Hinata sama, you should have told him about your feelings, but instead you chose to stalk him and be shy and meek to his face. That was not the answer. You should have told him because if he's a great guy as you make him to be, then everything would have been okay and he felt the same or not. Damn straight. And where the hell did you get off stalking me anyway? You're all shy, quite weak and weird since when did you get the courage to stalk me but can't tell me you love me? Naruto said it's not a hunger head. But it's your fault as well, Hukage sama Tora said stopping Naruto's victory dance in mid crew You should have focused all your attention on more girl. You were in the academy for Kami's sake. You have your father's looks. You should have been cruising around the academy going after girls of all ages. Hinata Sama deserved some of your attention. And so did other girls. Tora said as Hinata nodded and Naruto hung his head. But that's okay. You can't change the past. But you can change what you all you'll done. But you can change what you'll do once you learn from the past. So um try to work things out instead of tearing them apart. Tora said as Naruto and Hinata looked at each other and then back at him. Thanks, Tora. We would have who would have thought that second in command of the Anbu would be a great relationship counselor? Naruto said as the Anbu around Tora giggled while he scratched the back of his masked head. Wait, your codename is Tora, but why did you wear the cat mask? Nata asked as Tora hung his head as the Anbu around him chuckled and snickered. I in, um, aimed after the demon girl from the D-Rank missions, Tora admitted quietly as shamed as Hinata eyes went. That Tora? Oh my, it took my team an entire day to catch that thing. Then it beat on Kiba and scratched Shino's glasses to pieces. Kurone Sensei said that to catch Tora mission is used as punishment for ninjas who have been bad. Nata said as Naruto tried to suppress his laughter but failed miserably. It beat on Kiba? <laughs> I'll never forget that bit of information for as long as I live. I'm never gonna let him live through that. Naruto said as he fell to the ground laughing. Naruto could. It's not nice to laugh at the pains of others, especially your friends. Naruto called it lightly as Naruto got up and wiped a tear away. Yeah, but it's Kiba. So there, anyway, really, Tora, thank you. If not for you, we would have probably been arguing all day long. Naruto said as Tora gave a bow. I'm always happy to be of your service, Okake sama. Tora said as he and his fellow Genin disappeared into the shadows. Nada looked over to Naruto and saw that he was smiling down at her. She had just noticed how tall he had gotten and that he was more muscular than he was in the academy. He placed his hands on her shoulder as he gave her a cheesy grin. It was so stupid of a grin that it made her smile just looking at it. 
Hinata, I'm sorry, I should have known, but I was kind of an idiot back then. Nada said as she moved her hair behind her ear. How could I have not noticed someone like you? You were an idiot, that's all. But that's in the past now. Like Tora said, all I want to know is what happens next. Nada says Naruto sighed and allowed her to rest her head on his chest. Like I told Tenten and Ino, I still want to try a relationship, but we'll have to take things slow. I want to get to know you to make up time for the academy. I want to get the real Hinata Yuga and not just the one you show everybody. I know you're strong then, that Hinata, and I want to see it for myself, Naruto said as she nodded and blushed. Th thank you, Naruto kun. She said, grabbing as she said simply as he grabbed her shoulder gently and held her out at arm's length. Now there will be plenty of time for mushy stuff later. Right now, I have four other people outside waiting for me to speak with them. So I'll see you later, right? Nada said as she nodded. Of course, because I don't care who's in the name, who's in the way anymore. You'll be mine, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Nada said with a wicked grin and an even gleam in her eyes as Nada slowly backed away. You're mine, Nada kun remember that. Hinata said as she suddenly went back to normal and walked out. Naruto stayed at the spot she was for a few moments but then shook his head and he walked to the door. First Hinaji and now his bipolar Hinata. Life just loves fucking me. Naruto muttered as he got to the door and opened it. Next, link break with the Hokage barrier team. The barrier team resides in a large chamber with a two level stream runs from the upper level into a large basin onto the lower level. Above the basin is a large sphere representing the barrier. In front of the sphere are four council pillars in a square formation. Behind these is a stairway to the upper level shielding by a large screen with the barrier team symbol on it. On the upper level is a small lounge area. Konoha barrier team are in charge of maintaining the detection barrier surrounding Konoha detecting intruders and intercepting them. The detection division has three members, all dressed in clothes similar to those of a Shinto priest. Their hats have the barrier team symbol above the Konoha forehead protector. They reside on the lower level of the barrier chamber on sitting in the middle of the four pillars in front of the sphere, with the other two standing on either side. When someone enters through the barrier, the person in the middle detects them and their point of entry. They do this apparently without having to look at the sphere representing the barrier. The interception division has five members. When at rest, they reside in the lounge area on the upper level of the barrier chambers drinking tea and playing card games. They wear the standard Konoha uniform but the barrier team symbol on the upper arm. Instead of the standard spiral of Uzushio Gakure, when the barrier division detects an intrusion, the interception division rush to the site to apprehend the intruder. At least one member of the team for, is from the Yuga clan, which is which was why Hamachi Yuga was with them. The Konoha barrier team, the first line of village defense, if they could detect a sneak attack, then Konoha would surely perish from the sneak attack that they were the all-knowing and all-seeing eyes of Konoha infrastructure. They were the bravest, hard-working soldiers that Konoha could ever possibly produce. They protected the village from all threats, all sides above, below, and in an interaction. They were the extreme, ever vigilant. You got to be kidding me! We're out of sight already! Hamachi Yuga shouted as the other members around him looked horrified while he shook the empty steak bottle. We're out already! That's not possible, Kotetsu and Izumu shouted in unison as everyone else began looking around for more liquor. What the hell do you mean? We're all out of say, Kotetsu shouted as he grabbed the empty bottle from his friend. We wouldn't be out if you hadn't drank more than you share. Izumu accused the Yuga stood and glared at him with a slight blush from intoxication. Well, excuse me for having the stressful life of a servant to not only my Hokage but to my clan as well. Kami-sama knows I needed that wine more than any of you. I needed some things to keep me from falling, falling into pieces. Hamachi shouted as the other members sighed and glared at him. We don't give a crap about your home life, and you know that. When you're here, you share and you broke the unspoken rule by taking more than your fair share. You know what that means, Kotetsu said as Hachimichi nodded. Shansui awoke from his nap as he saw that his fellow mem four members were yelling. 
You guys should take it easy. It's only natural that Sake should disappear. Shansui sat as he lay in his napping position. Hamichi nodded as the other turned back to glare at him. Shut up, Shansui Senpai. Don't try and make it up sound like it just evaporated. It's gone because he drank it all. The big pig. Suron said as Shansui shrugged and went back to sleep. Blink break. What are those fools down there yapping about? The head of the barrier team sat from the spot at the front of the spear. That was the main point of their sensing system technique. They're out of sake already, so they're about to play a game of cards to see who's gonna buy more. The man across the sphere from him said as the head of the barrier team. Fools, it's only sake. Ed said as he sighed deeply at their actions. If the Hokage saw them like this, sir, what's that? The man said as the head looked to the spot of the barrier sphere that he was pointing at. It was a dot that seemed to be circling just outside the barrier, probably just one of the stupid birds looking for an easy meal out in the forest. The head said, waving it off dismissively, but sir, it's pretty damn big, like a giant bird, sir. It could probably hold more than three people with the size of it. The man said as the head grew irritated. It's probably just one of the birds of prey from Bird's Country. One of those rich capital visitors probably got bored with it and set it loose like that last time. Just ignore it, the head said as the man sighed. And if it entered the barrier, then the let ninja inside the village deal with it. It's it'll be a meal of one of their lay tables before tomorrow. The head said another dismissing wave as he looked away from the dot. The man opposite to him didn't look away though. In fact, he looked at it intently. He didn't know why, but that bird that was flying in random circles seemed ominous. Was that my word ominous? Because he definitely got a bad feeling from the bird. That was easily one of the two biggest he had ever seen on the projection. Something tells me that tonight we're gonna be in some deep shit. The man said as he sighed going back to their business. Let me drink with you guys. I think I need that. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys. I hope you like this one. And yeah guys, I will be uploading the next part of what if Naruto was in a political marriage. So stay tuned for that as well. And yeah. This is Apollo Uchiha and I'm signing out. Peace.